What can you expect in a pretrial? Once the decision to file suit is made, the complaint is filed and served on the defendant. The defendant can then decide whether to move to dismiss the case, transfer it to a different venue, or file an answer. The defendant can also file a counterclaim, asserting claims back against the plaintiff. Filing the complaint. Motions to dismiss may be based on improper jurisdiction if the court does not have power over the defendant because it does not reside or do business within the geographic jurisdiction of that court. Improper venue. If the defendant does not reside or did not commit any act of infringement in the jurisdiction of the court. Or failure to state a proper claim if, for example, the plaintiff has not stated a claim in their lawsuit that the court can resolve. If a defendant chooses to file this type of motion, they must include a legal brief explaining the reasons for the motion. Several types of reply briefs may then follow. After this process is completed, the court will decide whether to grant or deny the motion to dismiss. Motions to transfer can be filed by a defendant who believes another court would be a better place to proceed with the case. When considering a motion to transfer, the court considers which court is most convenient in terms of the location of necessary witnesses and or documents, and whether another court already has experience with the subject matter. Such motions usually fail, but can delay the progress of the case by several months, sometimes longer, while the court considers how to rule on the motion. The parties must present detailed arguments about why the case should be moved or not, and often the court will order an oral argument during which each party can present its position and answer questions the court may have. Answering a complaint. If no motions are filed by the defendant, or if they are denied, the defendant must file an answer responding to the complaint. Defendants in patent infringement complaints may respond by claiming, the patents were not actually infringed, the patents in question are not valid, the defendant has licensed the patents, the defendant is entitled to prior use rights of the patents, latches, the plaintiff waited too long to file the complaint, estoppel, the plaintiff misled the defendant into believing that a complaint would not be made. The defendants may also file one or more counterclaims, which are essentially new charges filed against the plaintiff. If such counterclaims are related to the subject matter of the initial case, they may be tried at the same time. If not, they may be served and tried separately, either before or after the initial case. The plaintiff has an opportunity to file a reply and provide an answer to any counterclaim that the defendants file. If a counterclaim is filed, followed by an answer, then the defendants can file a reply to the plaintiff's answer. Once these initial pleadings are filed, which usually takes about 60 days from when the initial complaint is filed, the case is considered at issue and the pretrial proceedings begin. Pretrial Procedures The first steps in the pretrial procedure are the filing by the parties of their initial disclosures and the holding of the preliminary pretrial conference. Initial disclosures must provide preliminary information about each party's positions in the case and disclose the identity and location of witnesses and documents likely to be relevant to the issues in the case. These disclosures help frame the discovery or information that the parties can request of each other, which is one of the hallmarks of litigation in the U.S. and one of the cost drivers of litigation. At the preliminary pretrial conference, the judge discusses with the parties the issues likely to arise in the case, the time that pretrial discovery is expected to take, and any issues that make the case unique, such as witnesses in foreign countries that require extraordinary means to obtain their testimony. The court then issues a scheduling order at, or shortly after, the pretrial conference, specifying dates by which certain activities must be concluded. This order often splits the baby, between the plaintiff's and defendant's proposed schedules. The plaintiff usually seeks speed while the defendant delays. A typical patent trial is scheduled to last from 5 to 20 trial days, but some can take much longer. Let's look at each step of this schedule to understand what is happening. Beginning with a protective order, which is an agreement specifying who can access the confidential information produced during the discovery phase. The discovery phase allows the two parties to disclose any relevant information and evidence they have gathered for their case. This evidence can include documents, digital information, photographs, measurements, tangible objects, and inspections of related properties. 
After the discovery phase, both parties can amend their pleadings based on the information revealed in the discovery phase. Close of discovery is the date by which all requests for records, documents, and other evidence must be complete. In virtually every patent case, a dispute arises over the meaning of certain language used in the asserted claims of the patents at issue. These are called claim construction disputes and must be resolved by the judge before trial. Summary judgment is a procedure that prevents a trial when one of the parties can show that its opponent cannot win. That is, if one party can show that the evidence is so clear that no fact dispute exists and that the law requires the case be decided in favor of the party moving for summary judgment, the court can decide the case without holding a trial. Lastly, if no summary judgment is issued, the final pretrial order sets forth the ground rules for the trial. Typically, it identifies all the positions of each party, every issue and dispute in the case that must be resolved by order of the court or at trial, all the documents the parties may seek to introduce to evidence at the trial, and each witness that is expected to be called to testify, either live or via their deposition.